Hello friends and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, thank you for clicking and if you're a return visitor, thank you for coming back. Today I cooked dinner for my wife and her two sisters who were visiting from out of town. So I figured I would show you how we make pizza on the big green egg. First I started by cleaning the egg and if you don't have a kick ash basket for your egg or similar ceramic cooker yet, please check the link in the description to get one for yourself. It will make this process a lot easier. I usually start every cook on the egg the same way by cleaning out most of the ash and lighting the remainder of the leftover charcoal with my Sear Pro torch, which you can also check out in the description below. If you're going to use a torch to light your cooker, be very careful if you use fresh charcoal because it tends to pop and crackle a little bit and the small lit charcoal pieces can pop out of the cooker. Once lit, I rearrange some of the pieces before adding fresh charcoal to the top of the lit charcoal. The amount of charcoal I added this time for the pizza was almost enough to cook the four pizzas that we made tonight. When I got to the last one, instead of the dome temperature in the egg being above 550, it dropped to around 450 for the remainder of the cook. Next time, I will need to add a little bit more charcoal to make sure I have enough to cook the remainder of the pizzas. After the charcoal goes for a few minutes, I will add the plate setter and cooking grate to the egg. The pizza stone I'm using is in the oven at 500 degrees to start the temperature going before adding it to the egg. My wife already made the pizza dough earlier in the day, so I'll have to show you that process in another video. Probably when we do pizza the next time on my Yoder Smoker YS640 with the pizza oven attachment. When using the pizza oven attachment on the egg, you must close the top vent all the way and in most cases leave the bottom vent wide open. Here I am installing the pizza oven pieces to make the egg into a pizza oven. Next we will go inside and assemble the, our first pizza. The first one requested was a spinach artichoke pizza. Instead of cornmeal, I use semolina flour, which I will share in the link in the description below. It acts like small ball bearings and makes getting the pizza on and off the peel much easier and doesn't leave the crust as crunchy as cornmeal can in my opinion. The dough my wife made earlier in the day is very easy to make. All you have to do is add the dough mix and one cup of 80 degree water. Mix well until the dough is smooth and elastic. It takes about 10 minutes by hand and 8 minutes in a stand mixer with a dough hook. Next, form the dough into two identical balls and let rise for two to four hours at room temperature in a bowl covered with cling film. But in our case, we use a proofing box to let ours rise since most of the time we make pizzas, it's for a large party and we usually make six to eight pizzas at a time. Next, grab one of your dough balls and place it on a semolina floured surface. I start out by pressing down almost to the edge. Make sure not to press all the way to the edge so while cooking your pizza, your dough will be able to rise. Continue to toss or stretch your dough until you stretch it to 13 to 14 inches. Once your pizza is formed, I use a quarter inch measuring cup to apply the pizza sauce. For this size pizza, a quarter cup of sauce usually works out well. I usually work from the center and try not to get too much sauces on the edge. Next we have some marinated artichoke hearts which I chopped up earlier probably about a cup's worth, which I spread over the pizza before adding the fresh spinach. You want a nice layer of spinach since it will shrink a lot while cooking. Next, I added freshly grated, low moisture mozzarella cheese. If you've never grated your own mozzarella for pizza, you must give it a try. It comes out so much better in my opinion than the stuff you get in the bag that's already pre-shredded. Once you've assembled your pizza, it's time for the grill. I put a little semolina on the edge of the peel before trying to slide it under the pizza. You will want to check your pizza stone with an instant read thermometer before placing it on the stone. I usually aim for at least 500, all the way up to 700 degrees. The higher the temp, the closer you want to watch your pizza. The baking mat I'm using is to help keep our counter from getting any scratches from the pizza peel. It makes cleanup a little bit easier. I will leave a link in the description if you'd like one for yourself. 
See how nicely the pizza comes off the peel with the semolina? Normally you don't have to lift the top of the edge of the egg open when placing the pizza on the stone, but with the camera mounted to the peel I had to lift the dome a little to get the pizza placed properly. After about 5 minutes and rotating once with the turning peel, the pizza is almost done. This one took about 7 minutes to cook. They requested it not to be too well done since the girls like a softer crust on their pizza. As you can see, this dough is really easy to work with. If you haven't tried this brand, you really need to give it a try. I will leave a link in the description below. The next one I made was a pepperoni mushroom pizza. This time I started with the sauce, then a nice layer of freshly grated cheese before adding the mushrooms and pepperoni. You can use uncooked mushrooms if you like, but this time we decided to pre-cook ours. The pepperoni I used was the cup and char that is mildly spicy and probably one of the best ones I've ever tried. There will also be a link in the description for this brand. With cup and char pepperoni you have to put on way more than you think you should since while it's cooking it will shrink quite a bit. Again, I put a little bit of semolina on the edge of the peel so the pizza goes on and off nicely. After about 5 minutes and turning once, the pizza is done. The stone was a little hotter this time than the first pizza. I was going to try and cut the pizza while filming, but I realized I needed two hands. The next pizza was for my wife and she loves a simple margarita pizza with fresh basil put on after it comes off the egg. Here she is grating a little bit more fresh mozzarella for us since we realized we wouldn't have enough for all four pizzas. Instead of sauce for this pizza, you could also use freshly sliced tomatoes, but she prefers the sauce instead. This one took about six to seven minutes since the egg was starting to cool down a little bit. She doesn't like any charred pieces on her pizza, so I pulled this one a little earlier than it would have for me. The last pizza we made was for me. For my pizza, I like pepperoni, mushrooms, green peppers, and onions. For the peppers and onions, I slice them fairly thin on the mandolin since these pizzas cook fairly fast. If you like thicker vegetables on your pizza, you may want to pre-cook them a little so they're not still crunchy when your pizza is done. 
Again, for the pepperoni, you want to use more than you think you should, since they tend to shrink a lot while they cook. My pizza took around 8-9 to nine minutes to cook since the egg was down to about 450 degrees now. The stone was still around 500 though. Next time we do pizza, I will add some clips of us trying the pizza. The girls were at the beach all day and didn't want to be on camera so this is why I had to do a voiceover. If you like this video and want to see more from my channel on cooking or our fishing adventures, please subscribe, click the like button, and hit the bell notification so you know when a new video is uploaded. Also, please share my videos with your friends. Until next time, stay safe, cook something good if you can't go fishing.